So as this is called an aperiodic monotile, you're probably wondering, well, what happens if you try to actually make it tile periodically? Now, you probably noticed that they, all, they can all stack on top of each other like this. What happens if we try and continue a periodic pattern? Well, that's a flipped tile. Does anything fit there? Not really. Try a normal one. Now that, that fits in there quite nicely. But you can see that this part blue has taken over two of those each time. It's been greedy. So we can't have blue, 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 blue. What, what might fit in that gap? Yeah, that, that fits like that, but then we'd have to take that out. Try putting this instead. And now you can see this, what's left. That's too long even for purple, isn't it? There's nothing that would fit in there. Try flipped. It's the wrong way around, isn't it? And this other side is actually the mirror image of this one. So there's no simple periodic tiling that can emanate from this line. Here's another nice little periodic start. Let's see what we can do with that one. Green. Fits in there nicely. Put another green in there. Now, what goes in there? We want this in there, but flipped, don't we? Let's try flip it back. There we go. Oh, we've got a hole. We've got a kite hole there. That's no good, isn't it? That doesn't work. Now, what would happen if instead of greens, we started with a flipped one here? It's khaki colour. Now, what we're going there. In fact, we've got exactly the same as before, but mirror image. Again, we've got this kite hole left. So it all looks pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Yep. And again, the other side is the mirror image of this side. This is another attempt I made. It turned out to be a bit more complicated. Can you see we've got like Light blue, three yellows, light blue, three yellows, light blue, three yellows. And then two greens, two greens, two greens. I got a repeating pattern, but I couldn't extend it any further. Let's have a look. Um, I'll show you this in a different way. So I'll show you how those fit together. Here we've got a copy of the group. And then paste in another one. And does that fit in? Yes, that fits in there, doesn't it? And another one. So I'm sure David Smith at Oliver getting very worried, but uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't extend the pattern to cover the whole plane in a repetitive way. Now let's go back to the proper aperiodic tiling pattern. These are the normal tiles and these are the flipped 
tiles. And as you can see, there are nearly seven times as many normal tiles as flipped tiles. Let's have a look at where these flipped tiles are. There's two light blue ones here and here. There's six brown ones. Four beige ones. Five is that teal, teal ones. One khaki one and three purple ones. Now, can we see any patterns here? With the brown flipped tiles, there always seems to be orange to the left and below, left and below, left and below. And a red one above. And with the teal ones, where are the teal ones? Teal ones have red either side, here, here, here. Teal ones have green below. So is there some kind of pattern here? Does it extend beyond just one? Below brown there are two orange, two orange, two orange. But if we did that, then we wouldn't be able to count this orange as part of belonging to this flipped tile. So let's test to see if we have the same group of tiles surrounding every flipped tile. Here we are with the same tiling pattern, but I've taken out the old colours. I've just left the flipped tiles in grey. It's worth noting that all these flipped tiles could be put together as neatly as normal tiles are put together. But they're not. All the flipped tiles are quite separate. So we're going to test our theory about the groups. So I'm going to put all the tiles around a flipped tile the same colour. Including the ones just over a vertex. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six tiles surrounding that flipped tile. I'll color it in the same color as well. Well, that seems to work. Maybe we should try to make a super massive uh, flipped tile group tile. So I've created the flip group. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's massive. Make it a bit smaller to see. We got six orientations. One, two, three, four, five, six, back to red again. And I've also defined the normal tile so that we could add that as well. There we are. I'll show you some that I've put together already, in fact. Here we have 13 tiles. They're fitting together quite nicely. Sometimes no normal tiles are needed between the flip groups. Sometimes one, sometimes two, and sometimes three are needed to fill in the gaps. And here we have lots, lots of the flip groups are put together. And again, I've followed the pattern from a proper aperiodic tiling pattern given in one of the articles. We got 76 
flip group tiles, each consisting of a flipped tile and six normal tiles, and then 48 other normal tiles that squeeze in the gaps between the groups. You notice you've got these kind of lines, a line of red, and then one, two, three, four, five, another bit of a parallel line of red, of a green in this direction, a line of green, one, one, two, three, four, five, five again, a bit of another line of green, or with blue here, this line, another direction, one, two, three, four, five, another line of blue. So I wonder whether it's a condition of this type of aperiodic tiling that there'll always be these groups. Well, that was just a coincidence for the tiles here. Do you remember at the beginning of the video, we looked at the Penrose tiles and we saw some had curly lines, curvy lines. So I thought we'd try putting some curvy lines on these tiles to see if that looks interesting. Here we are. I've got a, a main tile and a flipped tile. And I've drawn curvy lines from the middle of the irrational length sides. So that the if, if we put a tile against another tile, the irrational length size will be put together and the line will seem to be continuous. So the simplest lines possible are these ones, just drawing an arc from one side to its neighboring side like that. Here we have the aperiodic tiling. So let's have a look and see what those curvy lines look like. Well, that's quite surprising. It's rather boring, isn't it? Completely regular spacing. The tiling isn't quite as chaotic as we thought. And that wouldn't really happen in the Penrose tiling. Now, a second design for curvy lines is like this. That's for the main tile and then mirror image for the flipped tile. If you imagine this line extended and this line extended where they intersect, draw an arc like that. And then this point, we draw an arc. And from this point, we draw an arc to meet it. And we'll see what, uh, what patterns they give. Now let's have a look and see what happens with this second pattern. We have some curvy roads and roundabouts here. If I put the flip tiles back to the simple pattern, the first one, we get some extra roundabouts. Can you see? First pattern flip, second pattern flip. The third pattern, like this, we got a uh, double curly one here. Now uh, from this line where it would intersect that line, center up here, we draw an arc there. Let's see what the third pattern gives us. Normal tiles, third pattern. Funny sort of propellers, old telephone handset, and the flip tile is still on the first pattern. Flip tile on second pattern. Ah, this is the pattern I put in the very beginning for the colors. And the third 
pattern for the flip tires as well. Some of these shapes are quite weird. And the fourth pattern, this time I've uh, overlapped, intersected the lines to see what sort of chaotic pattern this will give. Joining a arc with a little bit of straight line here. Go to the fourth pattern. Fourth pattern with normal tiles, flipped tiles, still pattern A. Now these looping lines seem to go on forever. Flipped tile B. Not so many loops. Flip tile C. And flip tile D, both with that same pattern. Now, here, there's one line I can see which is joined up loop. It doesn't go off the edge of the screen. Can you see it? I think it starts here. There, back to the start. So you can colour in some of those patterns if you want. If you're more artistic than I am. This was actually from the hexagonal um, pattern which repeated. And this is from the rotational symmetry tiling we try to do. So thank you for watching. And if anybody wants to play with my program, I can, it's a Python program, I can throw it up into a cloud or something. Thank you and bye-bye.